Hey YouTubers, Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. You're probably joining us today because you have one single burner on your gas cooktop making that constant clicking sound. Well, in this video, we are going to show you the step-by-step -step process on how to properly and safely replace your ignition switch. Let's get started. All right, YouTubers at the cooktop now, and ours is not installed in the countertop. It is on the floor on a piece of cardboard, so it does not scuff up the actual hardwood floor. From here, these are your little knobs, and carefully, with equal pressure, go ahead and remove those. And underneath each of these knobs are your ignition switches. So as you can see, they are impossible to pull out in our current configuration. So what we are going to start doing is pull off all of the grates as well as the plates and we'll remove all of them making progress all five knobs removed all three grates removed as well as all five plates removed from here you have circular plates these are your igniters do not harm them carefully remove this circular plate in a way where you do not touch the igniters and you will do this for all five burners. From here, we need to flip the cooktop over and gain access to the rear side. Okay, at this point, the cooktop is laying on its face and this is the rear panel here. You'll notice some Phillips screws your screws may be Phillips screws or flathead screws. And up in the top left corner, that is the actual gas hookup for the pressure regulator. And in our case, we have already removed that. So let's continue on. You've got a Phillips screw here on the opposite side there and two additional ones. Let's go ahead and remove four of those screws. All four screws are removed and I'm not sure if your cooktop will be the same. However, this is just a plate. We'll set that aside in a safe location. And the whole purpose of removing that plate is to gain access to one, two, three, four, five additional screws, which will allow us to pull this entire plate off. So with that said, let's continue and remove all these Phillips screws. Making progress so far we've removed 16 screws plus the additional four. Hopefully your cooktop has less screws. However, not all screws are the same so take mental note or make sure you take a photo. When it comes time to reinstall this plate, you want to make sure you put the correct screws back in the correct holes. And also very important when it comes time to purchase replacement parts, this is your information sticker. It has your model number, your serial number, as well as additional items there that are important. At this point, all screws but one are removed. The largest screw on your cooktop is most likely the ground screw and will not need to be removed. Cooktop is back in the upright position and from here, the actual cover of the cooktop. Go ahead and raise it and there is your module. We replaced that in a separate video, added a cool and funny Raptor sticker to it. And inside that little hole is a Phillips screw as well on the back side right there. You do not need to remove that screw. Just loosen it up and we'll be able to shift this control module to the left and out of its groove. However, that center screw, go ahead and remove it fully. And you will need a small Phillips screwdriver to get in that tight spot there. And as you push this upper portion up, be careful, don't harm these electrical cords here. Making progress, the screw inside that hole is fully removed and the screw on the back side is loosened up and we shifted the control module to the left off that slot. From here, carefully raise the cooktop and just be careful because it is connected to those cords. And from here, we have access to all of the ignition switches on the bottom side. Here they are up on the top, and here they are on the bottom. At this point, I have lowered the top portion of the cooktop back in place, and this is a very, very important step. Again, in the event that you have one single burner that is making that constant clicking sound, we want to make sure that we replace the correct ignition switch. So in our case, five burner cooktop, the bottom left cooktop burner, is making that constant clicking sound and we want to verify 
this is the ignition switch that we are going to replace down below. Yours could be different, so again, verify which ignition switch you are going to replace before moving forward. From here, we'll raise the cooktop and gain access to the bottom side where all those ignition switches are. Making progress, YouTubers, I've got the cooktop lifted up and on its side there, and you can see all the internal parts of the cooktop. That big blue piece of tape is helping support the control module in place so it's not hanging by those cords. Down here, you have a ground screw and your power cord. As we work through this project, we want to do our best not to harm these connection points. We are not going to remove those in our case. Coming up top, carefully shift this back and this ignition switch comes up and off that little rod there. And I might need both hands. Okay, YouTubers, that actually worked out very conveniently. It was a little easier than I thought it would be. Again, I shifted this portion of the assembly downward and be very, very careful. This is a gas line. Do not crimp it. Do not bend it. Do not harm it in a way where you're going to cause leaks. You do not want a gas leak. Trust me. Once you pop this ignition switch up and off this little rod here, you can pull it out and you've got two connection points here. Go ahead and carefully remove those. And there is your old faulty junky ignition switch. Let's toss this in the garbage and go grab the new one. The brand new ignition switch has arrived. Let's go ahead and open it. With the brand new ignition switch, what we'll do is reverse the steps and connect the electrical connection points here. And what we will do is reference how all of the other ignition switches are positioned. And we will position the new ignition switch accordingly and connect the connection points. Both the electrical connection points are properly secured. And from here, shift this portion of the cooktop or gas line downward and position this properly on the actual rod here and insert it. And I might need both hands. New ignition switch is properly aligned and positioned on the rod there. Shift it down. From here, we are going to carefully lower the cooktop back in place and secure the control module with the two screws. Making progress, YouTubers, the control module is realigned and secured. And as you work through that and secure that control module, just be careful, don't harm any of those electrical connection wires or cords. From here, carefully lower the cooktop. What we'll do is turn it on its backside and secure all the lower screws on the underside. Cooktop is flipped over, properly align the screw holes, insert and secure the screws. If yours is like ours, we have four screws that secure this plate. Plate secured to the actual bottom portion of the cooktop. And if you're curious, those little screws sticking out, that's what secures the module. From here, put the cooktop back on the upright position. Cooktop flipped over in the upright position. From here, grab these circular rings. And as you reinsert these, do not harm that igniter. Be very careful. From here, we will grab the knobs and the plate, reinstall those, and then rest the grates back on the cooktop. And as you insert the knobs, yours could be different, but ours has a red line here. That is the up or top portion of the knob. On the bottom side, it has a half circular slot. Position those properly on the rods with equal pressure. Push down and continue that process, all four knobs. All five of our knobs are secured. From here, we will grab our plates and you'll notice a round slot here that loops around your actual igniter and you will continue this process all five plates. From here, we'll grab our grates and rest them on the cooktop. From here, double check you're not leaving any parts behind and we are going to reinsert and install this cooktop to our countertop, gas line, and electrical outlet. That's it, YouTube. We'll see a quick friendly DIY project. Do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely go to your settings, turn on your YouTube notification bell. Once you do that, every video that we upload, you will be notified. You will be able to stay up to date with us and that will be awesome. Thanks again for watching.